Hi, I'm Richard from Drive Green and today we're going to be spending a bit of time with the Vauxhall Corsa E. Uh, the Corsa E is Vauxhall's first entrant into the electric car market and I'd like to share my thoughts on this good value EV to help you decide whether it might be the right electric car for you. The Corsa E was launched in 2020 with a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack and a very respectable 170 miles of real world driving range, all at a very good value price. It hasn't been a huge seller so far, it didn't make it into the top 10 best selling EVs in 2020. And whilst perhaps it's not the most exciting of cars, once you get over any sort of snobbery you might have over the Vauxhall brand, you'll soon actually realise this is a really pleasantly surprising, really good EV. Design-wise, it's not going to set the world on fire, but it's a very pleasant and unoffensive looking little car. It's quite compact and low, and whilst it's perhaps not particularly sporty looking, it's no old fuddy-duddy either. Spec-wise, it's a classic Corsa. Compact for darting around town and the school run, but it also has a good sized boot and a decent sized cabin space, giving it lots of daily practicality. I also fancy it's a little bit more spacious in the rear seats than the Renault Zoe, uh, a car which I consider the Corsa's main competitor. Space-wise, it isn't going to work as a holiday car, but it does have lots of family practical capabilities. If you like your cars compact but practical and unassuming to look at, then I think the Corsa E has been designed just for you. The traditional Corsa feel is carried through into the interior. And whilst it's quite basic and quite functional, it's very well put together. Uh, and there's a certain sort of familiarity uh, that makes it really easy to get along with. It's a good value car, and I think that's reflected in the interior. Um, it's by no means a poor quality car, it's actually really quite nice and I actually find it sort of just straightforward non-fussiness really quite refreshing. You know, if you like your car sort of straightforward and functional and just there to get the job done, then I think you'll really appreciate the course and how it's been designed. Although it's based around the same platform as the Peugeot E208 and the electric DS3, uh, personally I fancy the course has got more of the feel of a, a Renault Zoe in that sort of no-fuss approachability. The course is actually a really nice fun car to drive. It's not pretending to be anything it isn't, but actually it's very fun. It handles very well, um, it's nice and zippy, it's even got a sports mode. Although I would say even at Sportsman, it's not quite as sporty a drive as the E208. However, handling and drive-wise, I think, you know what, it may even be a little bit quicker uh, and handle a little bit better than even the Renault Zoe. It's got a few different drive modes. It's got the Eco mode, a normal mode, and that Sports mode. It's also got a couple of different regen braking settings, so you can enjoy that sort of one pedal driving style, which is so nice in any EV. And you know, it's nice to see all of those things on a, an EV at this sort of value point. Overall, it, it's a really nice car to drive. And I think you'll certainly be presently surprised, particularly if you hold any kind of snobbery about it being a Corsa. If you put that to one side, you'll realize actually it's a really fun, sporty, zippy, nice handling electric car. There are five different trim levels. You've got the SC and the Elite in both nav and premium versions, and you've got the sport you're looking SRI. Spec-wise, they all have a digital driver's dash display, a nice infotainment system that includes a sat-nav. I mention this as increasingly I'm seeing electric cars that don't come with a sat-nav as standard, such as the Peugeot E208 and the electric DS3. I think manufacturers are starting to assume that people would rather use uh, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So as a result of which I think it's really nice that the Corsa, in line with its no fuss functionality, already has an inbuilt sat nav as standard. They also have an electronic handbrake, auto wipers, auto lights, lane assist, as well as having Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. As you go up through the trims, there's a variety of different options that can be added to the car. And these include a, a bigger 10 inch nav screen, a 180 degree reversing camera, auto high beams, sports seats, a pan roof, uh, 16 and 17 inch diamond cut alloys, heated seats, uh, driver assistance function including auto braking as well as road sign recognition and of course the sportier SRI styling. I think it's worth mentioning with the SRI, it's more about styling than any performance change, uh, as all of the courses share the same drivetrain and fundamentally they drive exactly the same, uh, and the SRI just looks sportier. 
The Corsa E has a very respectable 170 miles worth of real world driving range, which it gets from its 50 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is of course depending on driving style and time of year. And whilst it's perfectly possible to get 170 miles worth of driving range out of this car when you need to, uh, it's always worth remembering it's actually quite a fun little car to drive and if you're driving it in a sporty style you'll probably see that range disappear a bit quicker. However, range only really matters on those longer drives and if you're driving 150 or 170 miles and you don't particularly want to stop and rapid charge the car, you will of course adapt your driving style accordingly and you'll get the range you need. On a daily basis, however, for darting around town, commuting, getting the kids to school, that sort of thing, the range isn't really that relevant and you can drive this car in whatever enjoyable style you like. It's also still capable on those longer journeys as it comes with a CCS rapid charging connection. So you can charge up to 100 miles of driving range back into the car in a 30 minute rapid charging stop at a typical rapid charger somewhere like the motorway services. Faster still on a 100 kilowatt charging point. So who is the Corsa E right for? Initially I found this a bit of a problem to answer. Uh, the Corsa E is really nice, um, it drives nice, it's well made, um, it feels very good, very familiar and I like it. However, it's quite middle of the road, it doesn't stand out in any department. You know, there are more sporty EVs, there are cheaper EVs and there's more practical EVs. And the answer came to me when I took uh, a Corsa home one day. Uh, when my wife found out that I had a, an electric Corsa there, she immediately and quite enthusiastically asked if she could go and have a look. Um, she went out, had a look and came back and very enthusiastically said, I do love a Corsa. And then the penny dropped. Who the e-Corsa is perfectly suited for is people who love Corsas. It has that same traditional Corsa no fuss functionality and a somehow caring personality where you know this car's going to be your sort of faithful servant, reliably getting your family from A to B. If you love or have ever loved a Vauxhall Corsa, then you're definitely going to like the Corsa E. It's like a Corsa, however it's an electric Corsa and as a result it drives better, handles better, feels better, is better than any Corsa that's come before. If you're looking for a great value, easy to get along with EV, to use as your no fuss daily driver, then I think the Corsa E may well be the perfect electric car for you. I hope this video has been useful in helping you find out a little bit more about the Corsa E. If you'd like to find out more or arrange a test drive, then please do get in touch. Thank you ever so much for watching and please be sure to check out our other electric car review videos.